On today's show, we're going to be talking about Lightroom Mobile on iOS 12 and how some improvements have been made so that when you're using this little guy, things have gotten a bit better. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, talking about photography, video, Lightroom. I'm so into the routine of saying that, it feels like it's time to change it. It's just getting a little bit too rote, isn't it? Anyway, how are you guys doing today? So we're talking about Lightroom Mobile, Lightroom CC, technically it is now called Lightroom CC, on iOS 12, so this is specifically about iOS 12. Um, what I'm going to show you, what's unique, is because of iOS 12. It's not, um, if you're using iOS 11 still, part of what I show you still works. It's just there's now some new conveniences here. And what we're talking about specifically is using this guy here. This is the Apple Lightning SD card reader. This is the new version. I mean, it's been out for a couple of years or at least a year. Anyway, uh, it's the USB 3 version, so it's really, really fast. I have the older version. It's funny. I did a comparison. I needed the old one for something recently. It was like, oh my God, it's so much slower. But if you're using a modern iOS device, you definitely want to spend the, I think it's 30 bucks to get the new one of these. So what this allows you to do is to take your SD card straight out of your camera. So pop out of your camera, pop this in, and connect this to your iPad or iPhone and access the photos directly. Now, a lot of cameras, Lumix guys included, have built-in Wi-Fi. It's awesome for transferring a photo over quickly, um, you, you know, make the connection to your iOS or to your Android device, copy that file over, and so on. It's great. But one of the limitations, at least on iOS, and it, this might not be the case on Android, I'm not an Android user, so I can't say, is that you cannot copy the raw file over. Right? You just get the JPEG, which is a little bit annoying. Plus, if there's a lot of pictures you want to copy over, then the Wi-Fi takes too long. So this thing comes in handy because you can transfer faster, you can transfer frankly, more easily, you know, it's instead of setting up the Wi-Fi, just pop out the card, pop it in here, plug it in, and, and you're there. Um, but you also can get the raw files, which is pretty cool. So that's why, that's probably the number one reason I use this, is because I want to get the raw file from my G9 or whatever over to my iOS device. Now, you can connect this to your iPad, and it's been that way forever, as if I think it might have been new in iOS 11. It's been a little while now, but it might have been iOS 11. You can finally use this on the iPhone, which is really, really cool. It allows you to truly go out with just this and be completely mobile, get your pictures onto your device, and off you go. Now, if you're using Apple Photos, forget about Lightroom for a second. If you're using Apple Photos, it's really straightforward. Right? You plug this thing in, you hit import, and we're going to look at this process. You hit import, you've got your pictures, it syncs to your photos library, yada, yada, everybody's happy. But if you're using Lightroom, then it gets a little bit more complicated because unfortunately, and this is one of those, oh, come on, Apple, open this up for us. One of those limitations on iOS is that you cannot access this from within Lightroom. Kind of annoying, but true. I'm pretty sure on Android you don't have that limitation. So when I launch Lightroom and I hit the import button, I don't see this. I only see the camera roll. I can see the files server, but this doesn't show up in the files server either, which actually would be a really great workaround, but it doesn't. So anyway, so I need to import twice, which is kind of annoying. And that is a big part of, that is entirely basically what this is about, is about that process and how that actually has gotten better with iOS 12. You still have to import twice. You import into the camera roll, that's Apple's photos, and then you import into Lightroom. But we don't want those pictures sitting around in the camera rolls so we want to go and delete them. And that's that inner, inver, inner between process that has gotten um, a bit easier. So that's, that's, what we're, that's what we're talking about today. Hey, um, before I move on, I want to tell you guys something. So you know how I'm going to India? Remember I've been talking about this for a while? Photojoseph.com slash India. We're going January 30th, February 9th next year. Guess what? The trip is on. We have our minimum, I can't believe it took this long, but we have our minimum, four people signed up, deposits paid, ready to go. So we are going to India, which means for those of you who have been sitting back going, I'd like to go, but I'm gonna wait until it's actually for sure 100% on, it's 100% on. So now we're going, now it's time to sign up. So now there's only four seats left. And the cool thing about the four seats left is if we get six people, so six total, right? The uh, price drops $500 per person. Everybody gets a discount. If we fill it with eight people, everybody gets a $750 discount. So it's a pretty significant discount, right? So basically, as I add more people, I'm kind of wrapping, ratcheting down my profits because a lot of my cost is fixed, whether there's four people or eight people. So I'm passing that on to you guys instead of saying, ooh, I just get to pocket more money. So trying to be a nice guy about this and uh, trying to make it easier for more people to come. So if you are on the list, if you're one of those coming, Remember that if you can get a friend to sign up, it could end up saving you 500 or even 750 bucks. So 
pretty cool. PhotoJoseph.com slash India. If you got any questions about it, you know what to do. Uh, pop them in the chat, pop them in the comments, whatever, we'll go. Okay, so that's, that's the big push for today. Actually, just one more big push for today. Friday, October 26, that is during Photo Plus Expo, I'm doing a photo walk with Panasonic featuring off-camera flash at twilight. There is a maximum of 20 people on this. Um, I haven't told anybody about this yet, and it's already half gone. I think nine out of 20 have already, slots have already been taken. So if you're in Photo Plus Expo, if you're in New York for Photo Plus Expo, and you want to do a photo walk that Friday, totally free, you're going to get your hands on a G9 to take with you. Our friends at ProGrade have loaned us cards. You're going to have a G9 and ProGrade cards. And I'm trying to secure a third-party off-camera flash, but that's not 100% yet. So if I don't, then we'll be using the Lumix flashes. We might have a third-party flash there, though. Um, all free, borrow the gear, off we go. We're going to shoot along the High Line at Twilight. We're going to have a model, and then we're going to gather up at the, um, at the standard hotel lobby lounge bar thing to go through photos, chit-chat, have a little bevy, and uh, discuss the evening's events. So if you want to sign up for that, photojoseph.com slash events. You'll see everything listed there. Ooh, that was a lot of stuff. Let's get on to the show. Okay, so we're talking about this thing here. So here I'm going to, I'm going to um, open, do I, need to show, I guess I don't even need to do it this way. Let's just get rid of here. Take my card reader. I'm going to take the right card. The one that I want to use is, has pictures from today is on here. I am going to, it doesn't matter what order you plug it in. I'm going to plug this in. You'll notice right now I'm just on the, um, the desktop and I'm going to plug in my camera card, the SD card, and it's got an overhead view on here. And within a few moments, there we go, it launches up and we are now seeing, so you can see we've got the cable connected here. There it is, got a very, very close up view today. Um, we are automatically launching the import window. And here's a couple of cool things. So you see it says already imported at the top. Okay, that's great. It says 101 items already imported off of this card. There's some stuff that was shot on Thursday. Recognize that, that was from one of the, uh, one of the title cards. Some stuff shot on Monday. That's going to go, it's going to show movie files as well on here. And it's going to take a moment to load, but eventually we're going to get down to the today. And this is what I want to look at. So this is the first thing that we're seeing that is quite nice. We are seeing a breakdown by day. We are seeing a separation of what's already been imported. Now remember, this is importing into the Apple camera roll, so that's where this is going. Um, but I can, if I'm just at the end of today, I want to shoot, I want to import what I shot today, I can scroll to just today, see those, and select those with one tap, and then import them. And right now, I'm just still waiting for thumbnails to finish drawing. Um, here we go. Coming up, so there's the end of Mondays, and then there's today's. And you know what? You don't actually have to wait for the thumbnails to draw. Very important point. You can start importing without them. You just don't see what you're importing. But you can tap the select button for today. It selected today's pictures. I just shot these this morning. And then I go up to the import button, tap on that. And it says at the bottom, I love how I have to keep moving this, import all. So that's like, you know, if you forgot that you selected one um, or import selected. So I'm going to tap on import selected. Now, that's only part of this. Let me just stop that for a moment. At this point, we started importing those. We're going to keep those. At this point, you have seen what was on iOS 11. iOS 12, though, gives us something new that is really, really cool. It seems simple, but it's a big step in this. Go back to the top of this view. It's very small. But you see there it says import to library. If I tap on that, it opens up and I can choose any album to import to. Okay, well, that's, that's kind of handy, right? You can import directly into your family vacation album, whatever that you're on. But I'm going to bring these into Lightroom. So I have created a temporary album, just an empty album inside of Photos. And I'm just going to leave that there. It's always going to live there. And it's called Import Temp. So I tap on that and you saw that it was empty. Now it says on here, Import to Import Temp. So I'm going to import the selected photos, and it is importing those. We see the progress right there. So the reason this is good is twofold. One, it's going to make it easier to get these pictures into Lightroom because I know exactly where they are. Second, it's going to make it easy to delete these photos from the camera roll, which is a big part of this because I don't want these pictures both in photos and in Lightroom. Once they're in Lightroom, get them out of photos. Get them out. But there's two parts of deleting it. It's annoying. But these are the things you got to know. Okay, import has finished. It says import is done. I can choose to keep them or delete them off the card. I'm just going to go ahead and hit keep. And now, now I can do this properly. I can unplug this thing, plug this in, and we can look at this on the big screen properly so you can actually see what's going on here. There's the iPhone. Okay, so I'm going to launch Lightroom. And I am going to create an album because I just, this is my new shoot today. So I'm going to go to my album. There's some new views in here, which is kind of nice. Okay, so I'm into albums. I want to create a new album. Let's see here, this, uh, this is 2018. I'm gonna go into my 2018. I'm gonna create a new album here, create a new album, and we'll call it, um, what's today? It's 2018-10-03. And I just, I have my own 
naming format many of you are familiar with now. I go in there and I go space bar space, and then I can just call it, um, I don't know, morning, because it's, that's what it was. Nothing exciting there. Okay, so there's, I just created an empty album. Now the album's created, it's down at the bottom. I tap on that, it opens it up, and you'll see in the bottom right corner, we see the ability to add our pictures. So I tap on that to add from the camera roll, right, add from camera roll. And here I see all the pictures that are in here. And if I just imported these few, they're probably going to be at the top. It's probably easy enough to go in here, and I can tap and hold on that for a moment. You see at the bottom now it says select all, deselect all, or select range. I tap select range, and then I tap the last one of those, and that's those. If for some reason, let's say you had imported them into your phone, and then you went off and did something else, you didn't get to Lightroom right away, you're shooting pictures on your iPhone, and you wanted to find those, just those imports, then at the top where it says camera roll, I could tap on that, navigate to import temp, I select that, tap on the three dots on the top, for some reason, different place, select all, and then add those six photos. Okay, so those are now getting added to Adobe Lightroom. So we can see those popping up, populating the space. Once those are in, successfully imported, I no longer need these in photos. So this is a big part of this key. So I'm gonna go into the photos library. And at this point, again, if I had just done this, it might be easy enough to just say, oh, there they are. But you know, there's, you see it says I'm looking at albums, there's home, there's some pictures I shot on my iPhone this morning as well as the ones that I just imported. I wanna make sure I'm getting just the ones that I imported. So I'm gonna go to my albums, there's my import temp right on top. I'm gonna to select all of those and delete them. And I wanna make sure I hit delete, not just remove from album, that's deleting them. This way they are not going to sync both to Adobe Lightroom and to Apple Photos. But here's the big other thing. At this point when I hit delete, they're not actually deleted. These have been moved into the recently deleted folder, album, whatever. These now need to be deleted a second time to truly eliminate them. Now, this is not going to take up more bandwidth if you leave them there, but uh, until you get on Wi-Fi. But if you just want to like really be do due diligence, clear these things out, then you're going to go back into your albums. Down at the bottom, recently deleted. There we go. And now I can go to the very top for the newest ones. There they are, and I could select those now here and delete those out. So if I wanted to truly delete those, I would have to do it that way. A little extra tedious, but this will save them from automatically getting uploaded over Wi-Fi. And I know that that happens because if I go to my desktop computer and I launch photos and I look in the recently deleted, I see them there as well. So they are actually syncing up. Speaking of syncing up, this is really important. If you go into your settings and you go down to photos, there we go, you'll see in here you have a cellular data option. Super, super important. If you tap on this, by default, this is what you're likely going to see. Cellular data is on, unlimited updates is off. This is one of those big Apple kind of caging, no one really knows exactly what happens. I found a couple articles where people were testing it, trying to figure it out. But essentially what this is saying, if you leave it, leave it as it is now, cellular data on, unlimited updates is off, this means that it will use, your phone will use cellular data to upload some pictures. It will uh, probably upload your, probably do synchronization if you edit one photo, it's already in the cloud and everywhere else. If you import some new photos or take some new photos, it's probably going to update, upload those over cellular. But if you shoot like 20 pictures or a whole bunch of pictures, it's probably not going to upload all of them. It's going to upload some and then go, you know, there's a lot, let's sit back for a little bit. Um, and then once you get a Wi-Fi, then it will automatically sync up. If you wanted to always use everything, or always use your data and upload everything, then you can enable that unlimited updates. If you wanted to never use your cellular data, then simply disable that on there. So super important because if you're on a limited data plan and you do something like import 20 gigs worth of pictures and suddenly it starts uploading everything to two different clouds, both to your Adobe cloud and to your Apple cloud, you're going to run out of data pretty quick. So you want to be careful of that. Now, speaking of the Adobe side of things, let's look into that because there are settings in here as well that we want to be aware of. So if we look at cloud storage and sync, you'll see in here that there is a use cellular data option. It does not limit on there whether it's kind of, is it kind of smart about uploading some or not all. So here you really do want to be careful. There is this only download smart previews option, which means it's not going to download the raw file. That seems to be irrelevant of cellular or not. So I leave it off because if I'm going to access a photo, I want the full raw photo. But that use cellular data option is something you do want to be careful of. Um, if you are spending a lot of time on cellular, you may want to turn that off because once you import those 20 gigs of raw photos that you just shot, they could start filling up your uh, taking up all your bandwidth. I actually ran into this once at a hotel where their Wi-Fi was crappy and so I was on my iPad and I imported a bunch of pictures that I shot during the day and I had it on LTE and suddenly everything slowed down like crazy. I'm like, What's going on? Call T-Mobile, figured out that I was being throttled because I had hit my cap. Oops. So I want to be aware of that. So anyway, so there's, there's basically what we were going through. So it's 
the process, admittedly tedious, admittedly too many steps, but it is cleaner than it used to be. Shoot your pictures on your SD card, pop your SD card into the reader, into your phone, tablet, whatever. Import, import them into a temp import album. Just create that album, leave it there, import them in. Once they're in the Apple Photos app, then you can switch over to Lightroom, create your album if you need to create an album, import into there. Once they're confirmed there, you can go back to Apple Photos and delete them. Made easier because they're all in one single album that you've created. You delete them, make sure you hit delete, not just remove from album, and then don't forget to go into the deleted and delete them a second time from there. And that is your slightly improved workflow from what we had over iOS 11. I know, it's still a pain in the butt, but it works. And the fact that you can go out there with your full-size camera and your iPhone or an iPad and one of these things and have a complete mobile editing workflow is still pretty awesome. And then of course, since you're using them in Lightroom CC on your mobile device, once you get over to your computer, let's see, I would wager that this is already here. Yes, it is. So I look over at my Mac, here is my morning. There's the one I just imported, 10-3 morning. And, um, and there we go. So there's the pictures that I just imported that I shot this morning on the way to work. So that's it. That, my friends, is it. Nice and easy, a little tedious, but it works. So there you go. I hope that is helpful and interesting to you. So as usual, if you are watching live and you have a question, get ready to pop that up into the live chat. Make sure you put at photo Joseph in front of it. And if you are not watching live and you have a question, well, just drop it into a comment anywhere and I'll do my best to get to it when I can. See you back here in a minute.